Hey Fred, Mike McCurry here, and I have the grand privilege of being the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated and the host of this radio program you're listening to right now, Bible Tract Echoes. With me today on the program, I have a special guest, Pastor Dennis Leatherman. We're going to talk about how I met him in just a moment here, but he's the pastor of Mountain Lake Independent Baptist Church in Oakland, Maryland, and actually... By his own admission, he is a listener to this program, and we are very thankful for that. Brother Leatherman, you and I met um, a couple of months ago now. It's crazy how fast time flies. We met a couple of months ago in, on the way to, I should say, New Zealand. And what a time we had. We had a great time over there, Australia, New Zealand. And uh, talk to us for just a few moments about why we were over there. Well, um, Brother Lewis Howe is a missionary in New Zealand, and um, he uh, he has started years ago, back to 2015, I believe, these um, soul-winning conferences, soul-winning revival, I believe he calls it. And so he invites folks over from the States, preachers that have had an influence in his life, folk, uh, preachers that are, uh, are helpful in the matter of winning souls, reaching the world with the gospel. And so that's how we ended up going over is to uh, preach these soul winning revivals for him and God and the has first blessed time, him in tremendous ways. Amen. The first time you and I got to meet each other was essentially walking onto this plane in it was San Francisco or Los Angeles something like that and we had a very long flight to Sydney, yes. Australia and uh, by the end of it I had a wonderful time got to preach both of us about a dozen times or so and saw some great results but while we were there, of course, speaking on being a witness, speaking on using gospel tracts, all of these things, you spoke about some obstacles to Christians being a witness. And we can both agree, and you'll talk much more about this, about how the, we have a responsibility as Christians to proclaim the good news of the gospel. And so without further ado, we'll, we'll interact a little bit more, but would you just dive right in for the next 10 minutes or so and talk to us about this burning desire that you have to help Christians get over some of these obstacles? Sure, sure. Um, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30 tells us, a very well-known verse in a lot of churches, that uh, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. And so we're given this instruction in Scripture as believers that we're to share the gospel with other folks and in such a way that they believe and receive Christ as their personal Savior. And um, it's been my experience over the years in the ministry that when, a, when a, a person trusts Christ as Savior and they really get a hold of what it means to be forgiven and what salvation really is, something down inside their heart and soul stirs them to want to see, have others come to Christ, to want to share what Christ has done for them, to want to share that message of the gospel. Um, and so I found that to be true. Uh, whether we act on that or not, you know, is it varies. But that desire, that burden that is down in the heart and soul placed there, I believe, by the Holy Spirit of God when he indwells the believer. Now, the challenge is, you know, that desire is there. I talk to people. I ask folks, you know, from the pulpit, how many folks here want to see other people saved? Without exception, it's a 100% positive response. We want to see people saved. And so the burden's there. The understanding is there uh, of the need. However, the breakdown is, is not actually doing what needs to be done to see people saved. And so that's what we tried to chat. That's what we tried to address in this message and in some of our seminars and, and revivals. We try to help folks overcome these obstacles, and there, and I believe there's numerous ones. And the ones I'm listing here, it's no way it's a complete list. You know, a lot of people could come up with um, others, but it's ones I've observed over the years that um, are challenging. Um, I'll just read Romans chapter number ten. I think uh, deals with this. He says there in verse number 13, again, a familiar verse, verse, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a tremendous promise, whosoever. And, uh, but then he goes on and he explains um, the process, uh, uh, kind of, of getting that gospel to people, to them to be saved. He goes on, verse 14, he says, how then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him? of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? 
And so the need is to if, uh, the need is for God's people to go to the unsaved and share the gospel with them. Now the problem isn't on God's end. God has done everything necessary for a soul to be saved. Um, the problem isn't on the unbeliever's end. They're lost. They just need somebody to come and tell them. Now, there are obstacles on the unbeliever's end that would keep them from receiving Christ and accepting the message. But I see the breakdown in soul winning in our churches and in our personal lives is in between there, between the, the Savior and the unsaved sinner is that believer, the saints in between there. And that's where the breakdown comes. And, um, and that's where the obstacles come up. So, um, and again, I'm not an expert soul winner. I'm all, you know, I want to be better than what I am. But uh, these are some observations. The one, the first, the first obstacle I want to address is this lack of assurance. Um, 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 13. The Bible says this. Um, he says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. I think sometimes people struggle with witnessing to others um, is simply because they don't have assurance of their own salvation. We, we're not positive that our sins are forgiven and uh, that, we're on, uh, that we're on our way to heaven. And I found it's awfully difficult to lead somebody to some place I'm not at myself. And... Um, you know, so I think one thing we have to settle right up front, if we're going to win others to Christ, is I need to know for sure that God has saved me, that my sins are forgiven. I'm on my way to heaven. I think there's folks that um, genuinely have trusted Christ as Savior, and um, they uh, have been born again, but maybe through false teaching, or maybe they haven't been discipled a whole lot, and they really don't understand this matter of assurance of salvation. And so then that would cause them to maybe be a little hesitant um, to share their faith with someone else if there's some questions or doubts in their own, own mind. I know when we traveled to New Zealand and every time you fly, uh, the stewardess gets up there in front and she gives these safety instructions. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, things they tell us is that in the unlikely event of a loss of cabin pressure, um, the oxygen mass will fall from the ceiling. And then they instruct how to put them on, you know, and do all that. Then they make an interesting statement that I think applies to this, is they always say this, if you have, if you have young children, uh, make sure you put your mask on first before you put the mask on anyone else. You try and help anyone else. Make sure you have yours on first. And the reason for that is this, I'm not going to be able to help another person if I can't breathe myself. Um, I'm not going to be able to get it on the child if I'm not able to breathe myself. And I think that applies to salvation. I'm going to have a hard time sharing the gospel with other people if I don't have that settled in my own heart and mind. And so I think, that's a, I think that could be a significant obstacle to folks sharing the gospel. They're just unsure of their own salvation. And so that makes it important for us as pastors it makes it important for uh, soul winners, individual soul winners, that when we do lead someone to Christ, it's very important we give them from Scripture assurance of their salvation so that they can very confidently then go on and share what Christ has done for them uh, with other folks. So uh, a lack of assurance is, um, is one area I think well, that... Brother Leatherman, we have about three, four minutes left. Maybe, could you give practically for people that would call themselves Christians, maybe their names on the church rolls uh, of a, a, their church members, so-called. Their mama's a saint, their daddy was a Sunday school teacher, but they're struggling with this. Could you talk to us for just a few minutes, practically speaking, for someone that's struggling right now? I, I will say for those that are listening, I, I give this text number all the time. You, I would love to communicate with you and, and talk to you about this. You can text me directly at 309 Three one six seven two four zero. I'll give that number again at the conclusion of the program in case you missed it there. But Brother Leatherman, talk. I'm sure you've dealt with people that have struggled with assurance and someone that wants to get victory over this thing. What would you tell a struggling person with with assurance? Well, first of all, I, I would want to make sure that they, um, you know, if they're struggling with assurance, I would want to first of all make sure that they genuinely trusted Christ in the first place. 
Right. And that simply is, um, you know, recognizing the fact that I'm a sinner. The Bible says, for all of sin, it comes short of the glory of God. We know in our own heart and mind, our, our own experience that, uh, you know, we've said things that displease God. We've thought things. We've done things. We haven't done things uh, that God instructs us to. And um, we come short of his glory. We come short of the standard that is required for God to accept us into his presence. And because of that, if we die in that condition, unsaved, uh, Jesus put it this way, if we die in our sins, then we're separated from God for all eternity. And Jesus described it as a horrific place called hell. And he, he went into great detail in some cases, describing what this experience would be to die unsaved, to die in my sins unforgiven. And so that's where Christ comes in, you know, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So salvation is a gift that God offers, a gift you don't purchase it or it ceases to be a gift. You don't earn it. It becomes a payment if I'm trying to earn it. God says, no, it's a gift. And uh, he offers this. The reason he can offer us eternal life, forgiveness of sins, a home in heaven as a gift is because Jesus paid for it on the cross. And he died and suffered the judgment of our sins for us. He paid that uh, hell price that was on our sin for us in our place. He took responsibility for our sins, was buried, rose again. So if we'll come to him in faith, like we read in Romans uh, 10, 13 there, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just because Jesus died on the cross, was buried and rose again, doesn't mean everybody's going to heaven. We have an option of accepting, receiving that gift, or we can say, no, thank you, I'm not interested, and go our way and try and earn it or whatever. So, um, so to be saved simply means I recognize I'm a sinner, I believe that Christ died for me, was buried, rose again, and then I'm putting my trust in, I'm, I'm relying upon, I'm depending upon him to forgive me give me this new life, eternal life, and then ultimately get me into heaven uh, uh, in God's presence. And so it's on Christ's end. I'm just simply trusting him to do it Amen. for me. I've heard it put this way, people that wonder, you know, uh, that the Bible says no man can pluck you out of his hand. Well, you yourself are a man, which means you can't pluck yourself out of his hand either. Once saved, always saved, all those times. In all seriousness, if you're listening right now and you're struggling with this, we got about 20 seconds left. Would you please reach out? I'd love to hear from you. You can text me at 309-316-7240. Pastor Leatherman is going to be back with us tomorrow. There's about five or six more shackles, more weights, more, more things that keep us from being a witness. I want you to hear about all of them because maybe one of them will apply to you. Thank you so much for listening to the Bible Tracked Echoes radio program. We'll talk to you very soon.